this fighter could this man be the man he faces next bruce scott one of johnny nelson's former opponents is on the way Price fighter, the cruiserweights live from Earl's Court here in London. Time for the second of our quarterfinals. It involves one of the biggest characters in Price Fighter this year, a man known as Buster. Action. Action from Buster. From the word go, it's going to be them flying. Can you ever say you've seen a Buster Keaton fight without fireworks? Please, please God, fingers crossed. You know, I'm gonna walk away with that trophy. A lot of them can fight, and a lot of them can punch. But if you mix both together, I'm the man. I'm gonna um, hurt somebody. My mom told me not to say this word but I think somebody's gonna get hurt. Some of these guys shouldn't be in the same ring with me because they're not in my class. I'm not gonna prove it. Very different characters, aren't they? John Buster Keane celebrating his 37th birthday today. Six to four outsider in this one against Bruce Scott, former British and Commonwealth champion. Two to one on with the bookmakers. RMC, John McDonald. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Quarter final number two in the prize fighter series, the Cruiserweights. Introducing to you firstly, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the green trunks, trimmed with black and gold. Weighing in at 14 stone, one pound, 11 ounces, 36 fight record, 26 win. 18 inside the scheduled distance, nine losses. Ladies and gentlemen, the former British and Commonwealth champion from Jamaica originally and now from Hackney, East London. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the prize fighter known as Lionheart, Bruce Scott! <laughs> and across the ring, fighting under the blue corner, wearing the silver trunks, trimmed with black, weighing in at 14 stone, five pounds, 42 fight record, 26 wins, 19 inside the schedule distance. 16 losses, the former British cruiserweight champion from the still city of Sheffield, where he is known as John Buster Keaton! <laughs> Time for the bell, Michael McCann, referee in charge of the action is Mr. Richie Davis. This is three three-minute rounds. Okay, fellas, you both know what I expect of you. Behave yourselves, do as you're told, and above all, defend yourselves at all times. Good luck to you both. So here's the second of their quarterfinals, and these two might have to fight from memory of it. John Buster Keaton, 37 years old today, hasn't fought for 20 months since losing a British title fight against Mark Hobson. And Bruce Scott, who's given us some real thrills along the way, is a real character. Been three years out of the ring, the former British and Commonwealth champion, 39 now. Man who grew up in the grip of poverty in Jamaica to make something out of himself as a pro fighter. He got him with a very sharp left hook straight away there and jab against Buster Keaton. These guys are not just hungry, they're absolutely starving for the £25,000 on offer tonight. And you have to say with uh, Keaton, you know, he's not gifted, he's not a big puncher. He's carved out a pretty decent uh, career for himself just on sheer enthusiasm, will to win, and I'm sure that's what they've brought here tonight. But uh, being in with a man who's stopped him a couple of times already, he won't feel that the draw has been uh, too favourable to him. A pretty sharp start, this, by Scott, considering that ring rust must have accumulated over three years, but he's obviously done plenty by way of preparation. He was always a fiercely determined and committed trainer, Bruce Scott. I remember him in world title fights with Johnny Nelson, Wow. Carlos Gomez for the WBC title. He also fought Enzo Macronelli and had him down, the former world champion, inside the first 30 seconds, lost the fight in the fourth round. That was for a WBU title. The key to not allowing him to get set for the punches. He's trying to keep him off balance just to keep pouring some shots and there. Uh, Scott 
great right uppercut from Keaton there, Jim. And he's got him going a bit. He's pushed him down in the end. There were a lot of punches before that, though, including some hefty ones to the body. He's going to... He's, he's badly hurt. He, he's badly hurt. He you can see his eyes. His eyes have gone. His legs are looking unsteady. This is not what we expected. Scott, the favourite for this one. He started well, but Keaton's got him going here. It was the uppercut, I fancy, that caused the main damage and a couple of body shots as well. But the legs of Scott have stiffened up. It's a big ask to come back after three years out, Jim. Yep, but Keaton just needs to, to stand back and give himself a little bit of room. He knows he's the power. His tactics have been spot on here. He has not allowed Scott to get any leverage in his shots. And Scott's legs are still looking really unsteady. Picking the punches reasonably well, Keaton, and he knows now that he can hurt Bruce Scott, who calls himself the Lionheart. He won't surrender easily. Warning for Dominic Ingle in the corner there. Yeah, it's just the corner. I think they're shouting instructions all the while. I wonder if that's a rule that maybe we should be dispensed of. I mean, you can't expect seconds not to get excited, especially in this kind of fight. Jab as well. John Buster Keaton, who became the British champion at the fourth attempt. He's a trier, all right, this fella. Scott, as he got over the worst, is the life coming back into those legs after the knockdown. But this is a 10 8 round, remember, because of that knockdown. It's like winning two rounds in one, effectively. Hands down, hands down. Put the legs out. The well, I think if, we, if we we're told beforehand someone's going to visit the canvas and this one we would have expected it to be Keaton but to his credit his tactics were bang on okay the actual knockdown was more of a push than anything else I don't think every referee would have counted that but the damage was done beforehand it was all over the place but as you can see it was really balance and a push that put him over but it's meant a massive start in this one Good uh, Keaton who started as the outsider in this fight is now four to one on to win it and you can get 11 to four if you fancy bruce scott to pull this one around in the final two rounds yeah. get on your jab come on you only need this round from the famous Ingle camp in Sheffield that produced Harold Graham, Prince Nassim Mohammed, Johnny Nelson, and a few others too. Junior Witter. And if John Buster Keaton can do this tonight and somehow win prize fighter as a 16 to 1 outsider, the celebrations in that gym, well, I think they'll be getting the champagne out. So will Keaton. He's looking for a birthday present, isn't he, tonight? Yeah, well, he couldn't have asked for a better start, so pretty much if he can win this round, he's on his way to the next round. But it uh, has to be clear for both of these shots now from Scott. Big right hand, and now Keaton's hurt and wants to hold on. He did find a shot there. He's a real gritty character, is Bruce Scott. They don't call him the Lion half for nothing. See, Scott just found a little bit of room there to get some leverage into the shot, and that's what Keaton has to be very careful of. And an uppercut as well, Scott. Great comeback. Some fight between these two, isn't it? It looked like it might be the most explosive of the quarterfinals. And the action here, well, you can't take your eyes off it, can you? See, Keaton not keeping Scott occupied the way he was doing in the opening round. So Scott getting the counters off, and the solid counters, shaking him up a couple of times. No talking, says Richie Davis, the referee. They've not got too much time for that, I tell you. But both fighters have been hurt in this already. And, of course, Scott has been on the floor. Two more hooks from him with his back to the ropes. Well, I think Keaton is a fighter who expects to take big punches and he's prepared to take them and come through them. And Scott just... Uh, not looking quite as confident as this round wears on. That was a better shot. That right hand has worked for him. Here come some more heavy shots from the Jamaican now based in Hackney. Still sends money home to his family in Jamaica and has done all through his boxing career, which started way back in 1991, 18 years ago. Scott remembering the green trunks. 
Well, Keith isn't trying to dig in the big shots now. I thought he would have been just trying to outwork Scott. But he's winding the shots up now. Maybe that the fact that he shook him up so badly in the opening round, he feels he has the power to get him out of there. The heavier looking shots in this session, though, have come from Bruce Scott. Maybe he is cutting back the deficit. It's an all-action affair, Jim, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's pretty much what we expected. And when we look at the, the eight entrants, we knew there was going to be some excitement, some big punching. There were plenty of each in this one. Good body shots, too, from Scott. You're in front still, but you're getting caught with stupid shots. Deep breathe. Are you listening to me? Are you all right? Yeah. Right, deep breathe. Deep breathe. Yeah, Keith is still pressing forward, but you can see Scott was finding the room to get the punches off. Not keeping them occupied the way he was doing in the opening round. And uh, the much more solid punching in that round certainly came from Scott. Picked him nicely. That was a big right hand. That shook Keaton up. Took it well, but uh, that took some of the, the steam out of his work. Good defence. Don't make a back score on there. Give him a drink. Come Here we are, punches landed. Keaton, four more. Scott from a family who couldn't even afford butter on the bread or shoes for the kids when he was uh, a young boy in Jamaica where he had dreams of being a footballer. He was a very good winger in the Jamaican league, apparently, but boxing is what he chose. Now, six to four on, Keaton. And that means there's been a bit of money for Scott to pull it back somehow, but he'll still be behind if you score the first round 10-8 because of the knockdown. He should be a point behind, Jim, shouldn't he? Yep, that's the way I have it, because it was a, a knockdown. I mean, it may have been a kind knockdown as far as uh, Keaton was concerned, but it was scored, so we have to score to that way. Oh, good stuff here from Scott. He's really sinking them in. Setting his feet, throwing the hooks. Keaton got in with a couple of right hands of his own. But this is, these two are almost fighting each other to a standstill. This is a 12-rounder condensed into three. Another big right from Scott. Great comeback Watch from him, really, considering Watch how much you, trouble he was in in the first. Oh, oh lovely punch. Now, these are hot for really? I mean, Keaton, there's no real method. He's still trying to push Scott back, but there's no method in his work. He's wide open for these uppercuts. Well, these two are just slugging it out like two brawlers on a street corner. Good right uppercut again here from Keaton. You know, whoever goes through here, I'm just wondering if this is going to cost them the title because they're both looking very, very tired. There you go, Scott. Don't every punch has been wound up. Every punch is a hard one. And of course, they've got a semi-final to think about one of them, but they can't afford to think about that. They just have to get this one won. It may be that Scott needs a knockout here, really. Well, the big problem if Scott wins this is we, we, we could be level as far as we're concerned, so we we'll just have to leave the, the officials to sort it out. He's just looking to try to take Keaton out. But these two have knocked a lot out of each other. And they'll go into their semi-final, whoever wins it, with a petrol tank, probably only about a quarter full after this gruelling battle. And I don't think Keaton, of the two, I think Keaton's punches are looking really tired. Scott is still trying to, to get some power in his shots. Some nice upper body movement, but they're both really feeling so tired. A couple of body shots from Scott. But well, through with the right hand there. Keaton half blocked by the glove, but only half blocked. Watch your head, Keaton! cross as well from Scott. This is the kind of battle that might make you realise why you're retired. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I mean, they don't have time to shed the ring rush. They just had to get right down to business, and that's what they've both done. I mean, Keaton forcing himself forward in the last round here, but not all his work's been affected. He can manage a share of this round, and that would be all he needs. This has been a close round. I thought uh, Scott edged it but uh, Keaton will be hoping for a share of it, and that will get him through to the next round. That's a tight one. Did Scott 
come back from the 10-8 round against him in the first round because of the knockdown and win the last two to level it up on the cards or do you say that last round was about level mm. we'll let the officials sort it out better success rate for Scott quite a fight wasn't it that I mean, all the way through, non-stop action. This is what the prize fighter was all about, excitement and drama. And again, a little bit unkind, he was kind of bundled to the floor, but the knockdown was scored, so that got him off to a flying start, but he was never really able to capitalise on that. Scott come back with much the better punches in the second round. A couple of times looked as though he may score a knockdown of his own, didn't. And they, but they were both feeling so tired towards the end of the third round, really. You could just score the third round, whatever way you see it. If Keaton managed to get a share of the third round, then he's going to scrape through, but it was a close one. We await the collation of the scorecards. There's a bit of early drama here. Dean Francis won the first bout of the night with some ease by stoppage. Looked like Buster Keaton was on his way to the win there, but Bruce Scott came back hard at him. But did he do enough? Robert Smith from the Board of Control just supervising things. Here we go. We have the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of boxing, referee Phil Edwards scores a contest 29-28. Referee Howard Foster, 29-28. Our judge, Marcus McDonald, 28-27. All three judges are in favour of the winner and through to semi-final number one. From the Steel City of Sheffield, it's John Buster Keaton. He gets revenge after two defeats earlier in his career against Bruce Scott. John Buster Keaton goes through and the knockdown did the trick for him, I fancy, on the cards. He's into the semi-final yeah. and that's the first shock of the night. Johnny Nelson, you were sparring with him in the build-up to this. Your, your hard work paid off. Nah, and Buster Keaton's a hard, hard man, and it, you know what? That took a lot out of both of them. Fifteen years ago, they both bossed each other. OK, let's go ringside. Uh, he's talking to Adam. John, third time lucky against Bruce Scott, but that looked tough, was it? Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah, I didn't think I'd be affected because I've been training all the time, you know. I've been in gym uh, six uh, since Christmas, and I've been training the whole time. And I thought... Um, I thought Ring must want to fight me, although Mark Hobson stopped me in Sheffield last time. I, I didn't feel it, you know what I mean? Uh, it was a great yeah. ding-dong, but have you kept enough in the tank for later on? I've got, I've got loads. As I've told you a lot of times before, I don't warm up for about three or four rounds. So, you know, let's hope and pray. Keep tight, keep me composure. Your birthday you know. starts off well. Well done, Buster. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> Here's a carrot. 